by 2029, you could retire on 0.1 Bitcoin. How is Bitcoin not going to take over the global financial system? In terms of the Bitcoin cycle, pretty much within a month, like October, November, we should start going up for real. We'll pass our all-time high, start going to 100K. Next year is obviously the big year. Everyone was saying, ooh, these big institutions are adopting Bitcoin. And me and many others said, no, 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 it's the other way around. Bitcoin is adopting these big institutions. Bitcoin's going to grow in value. And so instead of working a 40 hour per week job, at some point, maybe I just need a part time job with 10 hours or 15 hours so I can work less at a job and have more creative time for myself. Bitcoin is the great uniter of people because everybody can use Bitcoin. It's just like eating food or breathing air. Do certain people need different air? No, we all breathe air. I'm. Um why did you um, make that video around how can you retire on 0, 0, 0 0.1 Bitcoin? Why exactly that number? And how do you think about that? Yeah, so it's actually a segment I saw on another Bitcoin show. Uh, and they were talking, th there was a web page that had a, that had a calculator. And you put in how much Bitcoin you have and the, the rate of inflation, the fiat rate of inflation, and then the Bitcoin uh the, the Bitcoin price, how much it's going up, and you can sort of figure out when you can retire. And, you know, if you have 10 Bitcoin or one or anything, you put in whatever you want. And and they did all these calculations with 0 0.1 Bitcoin. And it was pretty fascinating. Uh, even some, it was saying like by 2029, you could retire on 0 0.1 Bitcoin. But anyway, the whole idea, let me step back, is is that you know, I've been in the Bitcoin space since 2016, basically, and I've seen a lot of people say, you know, oh, if you have one Bitcoin, that's all you're going to need is one Bitcoin going into the future. Then you'll be set for life and all this stuff. And then I saw this number come down over the past few years to now it's 0 0.1. And I was like, really? You're going to be able to retire on 0 0.1 Bitcoin? And and the, and the and but it's actually true. And the other part of it, too, is that normal people, I mean, who, who can buy one Bitcoin now, right? $58,000 right now today. Not many people can just, you know, go into their pocket and get out their wallet and buy one Bitcoin. So point one seems a lot more uh, doable. And anyway, this is all just speculation, right? Because we don't exactly know what's going to happen, but, but it is exciting for sure. There's this model of uh, Jesse Myers that has uh, basically said, oh, we have 900 trillion US dollars in the total, um, as a total wealth. And then it's like, okay, if, if Bitcoin is successful, how much of that can Bitcoin actually uh, capture? And I have my theories around that, but before I, I, I tell you that, what do you think? Uh, there are a lot of different theories, like with conservative, like 20%, I heard from 20% till 99%, I heard everything. Uh, so so what, what do you think is realistic that Bitcoin actually covers if Bitcoin is successful with no time limit on that? Because that, that could be in 50 years, that could be in, in 5,000 years. I have no clue about the timeline. That's the hard part. But I think if it's successful, if we use it as a store of value, uh, what would you say is the realistic capturing of Bitcoin of a total net assets? So my answer is, I don't know. I'm actually not like an economist. I'm just a normal guy who I, I, I was producing. I, I'm, I, I'm a podcast producer. That's what I was doing. And I was producing a show for Laura Shin, her Unchained show. I was producing her show for the first four years. So that's how I got to learn about Bitcoin. I had never heard of it before that. And and even when I heard about it, I didn't buy in for another couple of years, which was obviously a big mistake. But anyway, um, but yeah, so I'm not an economist. I'm an audio engineer and I'm an artist and I make fractals. And so anyway, how much of this, how much of the global wealth is going to go into Bitcoin? To me as a lay person, it, it, it's like when I read the Bitcoin standard, I got it. And I understand now how Bitcoin is sound money. And, and so from a principles standpoint, I understand now how Bitcoin is better than everything and anything that's ever existed. And so 
And I've seen how it acts over the last, what, eight years now. So from my own eyes looking at the charts and also understanding the fundamentals from a basic level, uh, there's just no stopping Bitcoin. Like who, like how is it going to, like how is Bitcoin not going to take over the global financial system over time? It's going to happen. It's already happening. And so I don't know how much, but I think it's funny when, when, you know, because earlier this year, early in 2024, we had these the spot ETFs, right, with the BlackRock and Fidelity and Arc, and everyone was saying, "Ooh, these big institutions are adopting Bitcoin." And me and many others said, "No, no, no, it's the other way around. Bitcoin is adopting these big institutions." And so that's that's how I feel. I don't know the percentages. I don't know the trillions. I don't know anything like that. But I'm just very bullish on the future because. I don't see how it can be stopped. As a, I love the perspective that Bitcoin is adopting uh, e e ETFs. What, what was your uh, what was your expectation of, of of the ETFs when you when when you looked at it? Uh, well, again, I didn't know because I don't know how many people there are in the world that are buying ETFs. I mean, I know people have it in their retirement accounts and stuff like that, but but yeah, it's just I just thought it would be a, a major adoption, and in fact, you know. Members of my family have money basically locked up in a 401k. And it was great to be able to just move some money over to the spot Bitcoin ETF. And I know there are Bitcoin maxis out there who are like, oh, my God, that's not Bitcoin, blah, blah, blah. But we all know that if you have money locked up in your 401k, it's a pain in the rump to take it out, pay the penalties. It's a whole mess. It's not worth it. Let's put it that way. So in in the few years or let's say in the decade before retirement, it's it's probably better if you have money locked in a 401k, just put it in the spot Bitcoin ETF until you retire. Now, that's not financial advice. Maybe that's wrong. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> Interesting. Um, shortly back to, to what you said with, with Laura, um, you produced a show. Was it that time where you got orange pilled? Um, I guess so. It was so it was a weird situation. So I was producing her show for about two years and I was learning about Bitcoin, right? Because I was sitting in on every interview she did, literally. Uh, and so I was learning about Bitcoin But again, I'm not a financial guy, so I didn't really understand the impact. And then something happened in the fall of 2018 for me. Um, it was kind of a mystical experience, which I don't know how much I should get into. But anyway, there was a time when I just I got this feeling that it was like a it was almost like a feeling or almost like a direct message. But it wasn't it wasn't like someone speaking words to me, but it was like you got to you got to buy Bitcoin. Like that was the idea, right? That I just felt it. And I was like, Oh yeah. I get, and maybe it was the two years working with Laura. Maybe it all added up subconsciously. And then my mind just told me you got to buy Bitcoin. So that's in the fall of 2018 is when I finally bought in. But back then I didn't, I mean, obviously since then I've learned every day, right? Cause I'm watching creators. I'm watching amazing Bitcoiners, uh, talk about Bitcoin. I've read the Bitcoin standard and some other, uh, well, that's the only book so far, but I have a few other books to read. Uh, but anyway, when I first bought in in 2018, I didn't understand it fully like I, like I do now. I didn't know what it was. I just knew that like, this is, this is different and this is something special. Even back then you look at the chart, you see, you see where, what happens. So, uh, Yeah. It's interesting. I, I brought them up again because I think if you study Bitcoin long enough, uh, forcefully or not forcefully <laughs> for me, for you, maybe forcefully because you have to sit there and watch two years of, of Bitcoin podcast. Um, you, you, you kind of have to do it. Like it's, it's not, it's not optional at some point. If, if you are exposed to, um, a, a Bitcoiner long enough, you will get the Bitcoiner yourself. Uh, and it's, it's, it's funny how, how it goes and, 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 
uh, it's it's really interesting why this is happening. That's why I always ask, like, okay, like you, you were exposed to two years of podcasting. Um, uh, maybe if it were, would have been about something else, maybe it would have not have happened. Uh, uh, and so Bitcoin is kind of like this extremely attractive asset that you're like if, if if you see it long enough you're like oh i, I want a piece of that i, I want to have something of that what do you think makes bitcoin so attractive uh, for you well one of the biggest things for me is that it removes money from state i think that is like one, once i realized that I, that was it for me i was like why are we letting these criminals literally run the money system and scam us every day. Like that's literally what fiat currency is. And I'll argue with anybody about that. And yeah, you know, and we have an army of people behind me that will argue with me. And it's not, it's not a difficult argument either. Right. Anyone who looks into fiat currency says, Oh my God, this is what, this is what fiat is. This is garbage is absolute toilet paper. And so um, once I realized that's one of the biggest things for me, getting money away from state. The state countries, right, have have been ramping up their authoritarian power over time. They're taking away more and more freedoms and liberties every day from people. And there's nothing that people can do because the, the state controls the money. And so once we take money away from state, it's going to open up a whole new world. It already is. And once we take social media away from these big centralized platforms and we start using Noster, I don't know. I mean, I think you're on Noster, right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, Noster's great. So these decentralized freedom tech protocols are the way of the future. I believe we're going to look back at, uh, especially for social media, we're going to look back at like, the first 20 years of social media, let's say 2004 to 2024, we're going to look back at that 20 year era as the dinosaur age and the, the stupid age of social media. Like, why did we give all our power to these centralized platforms and let them ban us for no reason and, and not even give us an explanation? Right. So um, so separating money from state is a big one. And that's and also having no intermediaries like in in terms of bitcoin it's great we can we can interact with bitcoin with each other we don't need a bank like why why have a bank like that's another question that traditional economists or traditional finance people they can't they can't answer that they'll say oh because the bank protects you and we're looking out for your best interest i call bs on that and so those are a few of the things why a few of the reasons why I really uh, appreciate the value of Bitcoin. I actually tell people, I think Bitcoin is the invention of our lifetimes. And, and that may seem hyperbolic and maybe it is. OK, but I smoke a lot of hopium. I just want to tell everybody openly. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> It, uh, it's, a, it's a good thing to, to smoke. I love the social media uh, comparison. I think you kind of compare it to, to the banks right now uh, that, that that we have with like the, the power that they have for, over the data and stuff like that. And I think uh, uh, an amazing part of that is just because there is Nostra, this makes the uh, other social medias better. I'm 100% sure Elon Musk is aware of Nostra. And he's aware if he does it too much on X, people are jumping ship because people want are on X because of freedom of speech. Otherwise, they could also be on Facebook or, or platforms that have even less freedom of speech than on X. So people that are, are on uh, X are very pro freedom of speech and very conscious about the freedom of speech. So people like Elon Musk are very aware of something like Nostra uh, and and they will be very careful with banning someone or shadow banning with them just because there is Nostra. If there would not be Nostra, he could have done uh, way more because he's already the most freedom of speech mainstream platform. If there's not even an exit wealth, that would be, uh, I feel like, very dangerous uh, for social media platforms. So I'm, I'm really hopeful. Also with YouTube, there is Rumble. Uh, Rumble is an amazing platform for, for video content because X tries to be a video platform, but it is not. Uh, I, I see it in the numbers. Uh, nobody, like, I have way more followers on X than on YouTube. 
and nobody watches the podcast all on, on X, they're all switching to Rumble, to YouTube, to the podcast platforms, to Fountain, to all of those. Most of them uh, switch to YouTube. Uh, but th that's kind of like where, where I'm going. Like only the possibility of having that freedom of speech with Nostra, it's, it's, it's amazing to have uh, with the bank comparison. I love that, what you said. Really cool. Yeah, it's really heartening, right? It makes you like, because I always think, what if we didn't have Bitcoin? Imagine the world without Bitcoin, and therefore we don't have Noster either, right? So take Bitcoin and Noster out of existence, and man, that is a bleak existence. Like what? Again, once you start realizing the truth that all governments are just absolute, one hundred percent corrupt, garbage authoritarian is authoritarians, and the money is captured and the money is all literally the US dollar is a fake currency with nothing behind it and it's it's ruining everybody's lives while the rich get richer so bitcoin and noster are our saviors and that i i really believe that what would you do if we didn't had bitcoin and nostra uh to have the most freedom possible i don't know i mean i i guess i can look at look back at my life before I knew about Bitcoin and, and well, Noster is very new, right? Noster's like started in 2022 in earnest, I think. Maybe it was started in 2021, but anyway. Um, no, before Bitcoin and Noster, I think I just, I've always been a person to just live my life. And um, I, I, I'm, an, I'm sort of like, I, I'm like the guy who, it's hard for me to have an office job at, where there's politics. I can't, I can't exist in that situation at all because I'll be fired in within 15 minutes. I'll just ask two questions and be like, look, dude, what are you doing? You can't do this. That's stupid. And then it'd be like, uh, please come into our office and they would fire me. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I would just, uh, I mean, we can all live our lives with this level of freedom, right? We can do what we want. Part of it is getting in touch with your inner self, right? Your spiritual existence. That's another focus of mine. My wife and I stream two meditation streams every week. Uh, it's called Lightness Meditation. You can find it on YouTube. And we stream two meditation sessions because I've been practicing meditation for more than 20 years. And it's the single most important thing I've ever done in my life for my own personal development. Uh, learning how to regulate my mind, learning what my mind is, and then on you know spending time to understand it because it's it's not something that's easily understandable uh but i think really focusing on yourself and focusing on your own creativity is what i've always done right i'm a musician i play in bands i create fractal art um i'm writing a novel now so i for me it's creativity i i like to create things maybe for many people it's you know cooking or uh obviously children right that's the most creative thing you can do right is have children and and <laughs> create children and work with them and and enjoy them and uh be there for them uh be with them during their journey so for me it's a lot of its creativity and that and i'm gonna do that regardless of what happens in my life uh but it just so happens that bitcoin specifically is going to allow artists and creative people to do more of their art because we're going to have to, you know, in the future, as Bitcoin continues up, people who have Bitcoin, that Bitcoin is going to grow in value. And so instead of working a 40 hour per week job, at some point, maybe I just need a part time job with with 10 hours or 15 hours so I can work less at a job and, and use more, have more creative time for myself. So, cre so I guess my answer is, is, uh, creativity. Interesting. Um, I, I want to quickly go into that, even though it has nothing to do with Bitcoin, but I think it's really important. Uh, why is meditation uh, so important? Yeah. So it, it, in today's world, we focus a lot on our bodies our physical existence, but we get, we almost, we give literally zero attention to our minds. Our mind is a tool. And you know, you're 
for instance, and when you go to school and you learn facts, <clears throat> that's you're you're learning facts, but you're not learning how to use your mind. You're not learning what your mind is. Your mind is the most powerful thing you have. Your body, it is what it is. Robin, you're never going to be a seven foot five black basketball player. I promise you, you're never going to be that ever. Sorry. You are you. That's who you are. Your physical existence, you can't change it very much, right? On the other side of the spectrum, you have your soul, whatever that is, right? No one really knows. If, if anyone's honest, they'll tell you, we don't really know what that is. But on the other hand, you have your soul that also you can't change because you don't even know what it is. So what's between your body and your soul is your mind. Your mind is the only thing in your life that you actually have control over. It's the only thing you can actually change. It's the only thing you can develop to a significant degree other than lifting weights and getting some muscles, which is fine. So the mind is everything. And our culture ignores the mind. All the powers you have in your mind, which are vast. No one thinks about it. No one talks about it. No one develops it. So what meditation does is it, it allows you to sit down and sort of regulate your mind because our minds are always like this. Even when people sleep, their mind is. So when you start to relax your mind and bring it down, bring the, the level of thoughts down, and then you can, you, you sort of, you, you, then you sort of step above your mind and then you can sort of see your mind and see yourself. And so if you sort of zoom out and you can observe your mind, if you can observe your mind, then what are you? That's the question. Sit down, meditate, think about it. It's, it's the most amazing thing anyone can do to learn about yourself and to unfold the greatest reality for yourself is, is meditation. I love that. I'm aware of, of, of that, but I think meditation is the one, and I'm really a, a habit guy. I'm a routine guy. Uh, I have the daily podcast routine that I, <laughs> I do, uh, daily gym and stuff like that. Uh, but meditation is the one thing that I'm really struggling to keep it up. I always have like a phases where I like do it for months and then like, oh shit, like <laughs> stopped it again. So that, that's why I always ask, like, why is it important? So to keep reminding me, oh yeah, it, it is important. Robin, do it. You know it. Uh, <laughs> go, go over yourself and actually do it. Go, go ahead and do it because I know it's, it's really important and really cool. Um, so, you want to say something? Oh, I was just going to say sometimes finding a lo finding lo a local group or local people that you can meditate with and that's ha handy. Also, um people do like me and my wife, we do live streams. We only do two a week and it's probably at the wrong time, but so what I'm saying is sort of surround yourself with some more people who are into meditation and that'll help you sort of uh keep going. Yeah. Ah, yeah. I, I think that that's a, that's a great one. Um, why do you think, uh, I see that in, in Bitcoin is so much, I interview so many Bitcoiners. Why do you think, uh, are Bitcoiners, uh, so great in health in nutrition and fitness and all, all those important areas? I feel like when you go to a Bitcoin conference, you see, uh, a little bit more healthier people, a little bit fitter people, a little bit more mindful people. Uh, it, it's fascinating to see for me and I often ask myself why this is that. Uh, do you really think that like the, the fundamental basis money um, actually influences the, the person himself if they use different form of money? I don't know if it's the money, but this idea of proof of work has always fascinated me. Because that idea of proof of work is a transcendent idea. It is a natural idea. You know that's how nature works, right? Proof of work. There's no other way nature works. Nature doesn't, you know, the, the trees don't borrow dirt from, from the, the mountain or the, or the mountain lions or, you know, in, in nature, everything is proof of work. You got to do it right now to do it right now. And um, so the fact that Bitcoin introduced this idea of, well, maybe it didn't introduce it, but Bitcoin popularized this idea of proof of work. And then you can take that idea of proof of work and start aiming it at different things in your life. Even like you said, meditation practice, 
Well, we could talk about meditation all day, but we all know that sitting down and meditating is the is the thing that we should be doing. So that's so talking about it is eh, but doing it is that's the work, right? So you can look at anything and think of proof of work. And also it just shines the light of truth on everything. Bitcoin is like the greatest disinfectant ever. It's just so simple and pure. Bitcoin is pure and when you sort of when you sort of have the ideas of Bitcoin in mind and you look at other things, you you can sort of see through the, like you, you you see those other things in a in a better light. And so you can even like for food. Isn't there a book called Fiat Food, I think? I have not yes. read that, but I want to read that. Oh my god. And my and get it for my wife too. Uh, but yeah, you can look at everything and say it's f- f- fiat food or fiat meditation or uh, fiat landscaping, right? Like there's anything, anything can be fee- you, you, this scale of Bitcoin versus fiat. It's very interesting to apply it to other areas. And um, so the proof of work, in my opinion, is one of the most interesting points about Bitcoin that sort of translates into other areas of life. Yeah, I love it a lot. And yeah, Fiat uh, Food, uh, it, it's a book from Matthew and Matthew was already uh, on the podcast. I think if, if people want to check it out, it's like 20 episodes back or something like that. But if you uh, go ahead and then just search Matthew, I think Lu- Luziak, Luziak, something like that uh, is his last name uh, on, on my channel. You will easily find it. And it, it was fascinating. And it, it, he really showed how how money... Uh, incentivized the wrong decisions in the food supply and the food supply is the one that that gets us because we just go blindly to the supermarket and pick things out uh, and 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 then the, the cheap things come in because people really don't like if the prices go up so if if you have then the incentives to not go up with the price you have to come down with the quality. Uh, so that's what the, like, I think that's my main takeaway from that book that um, when we have cheap money, prices go up, people don't like uh, pricing going up too much. So they figure out new ways of producing food that's just cheaper and has a wider margin uh, to play with if uh, prices go up. So that's something I was like, oh, wow, that, that makes a lot of sense how, how cheap money influences what we eat uh, and then basically uh, introduces uh, yeah, che- cheap food that, that we should not uh, eat and should uh, basically avoid. And it gets really hard if it's only that in the supermarket, it's only that uh, what, what we have. Yeah, I recently saw a, a meme. It was like, a, like a bowl of fruit or, or a package of fruit and it costs like $8. And then next to it was like some fiat food, some grain, so, some other garbage food. It was like 59 cents or something. And it's like, why, why is good food so much more expensive than garbage? Anyway, that's quite the question, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, really interesting. Um, what is your most controversial opinion about Bitcoin? Would you say? Um, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I guess. Okay, the only thing that came to mind is is the fact that I've spoken out against uh, some Bitcoin maxis at times. You know, some people who are Bitcoin maximalists. Now, being a Bitcoin maximalist per se is not bad because I guess if if you're going to go buy a simple definition. I think I am a Bitcoin maximalist, but what I really don't like is Bitcoin maxis who are, they just trash everything else and they trash people. So for instance, on Noster, right? Noster is a protocol and everyone is welcome, but you still have Bitcoin maxis on there who, if someone mentions Monero, they'll bash it. And I mean, hard, and so some people might call that toxic, whatever. I, I don't like that word because of the context it's been used in. But the fact is, um, that's not helpful. But it's okay that they do it. I'm not saying they can't do it. People can be as toxic or as – people can be as horrible as they want to be. It's fine. It, it, that's their right. But uh, my point is that it, it's not helping and 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 the reason it's not helping is because 
I feel people need to go through a process of learning about crypto and Bitcoin. I did. When I first bought, I bought Bitcoin, Ethereum. I bought Litecoin. I bought a bunch of coins, but mostly Bitcoin, because I didn't know anything. And other people online were saying that these are good, that's good. So I did it. Over time, I realized, yeah, these other things, they're, they're not that good. They're not good for me. So I had to go through a learning process with Bitcoin and crypto and NFTs. I actually posted some NFTs three years ago. And I had a guy who was maybe going to be a co-host on a show with me. He found out I had NFTs three years ago and he, st he literally stopped talking to me. He wouldn't answer my emails or anything. So that's the level of retardation that I don't like. And again, they can act that way all they want. I don't, it's fine. You're free to be as big of an a-hole as you want to be. Please go ahead. But I just think in the, the world is changing. This is a new paradigm. And people, when they first get in, people are going to make mistakes. People are going to buy shit coins. And we have to tell them the truth about it for sure. But we can't just be a-holes. And so when I see people being like that, it, I don't like it. And so some, there's been a time or two where I kind of went off a little bit, just a little, because again, they have a right to be a-holes if they want. And I, that's fine. Uh, so that, I guess that's one area where maybe my take is controversial. I don't know if it is. I really don't care. Uh, but, but I guess it, it is that controversial to you, Robin? <laughs> if you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis, I guess you already bought some Bitcoin. And now the most important step is to keep the Bitcoin. Keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the BitBox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up. It's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the Bitcoin on an exchange. And you can get a 5% discount with the code Robin at the checkout. Visit bitbox.swiss slash Robin to get your BitBox. And if you really want to bulletproof your self-custody setup, your security setup, and maybe even your citizenship set up you have to talk to the bitcoin way if you go to the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash robin you get a 30 minute free call where you can dive deep with them if your self-custody setup is secure if your citizenship is secure or maybe might be improvable or your digital footprint in general is secure. They are the experts in cybersecurity, in Bitcoin self-custody, and how to be a secure, sovereign individual in general. And last but not least, I have something completely new for you guys. I partnered up with Coin Vigilante. This is the most beautiful Bitcoin timepiece that I ever saw created by anyone. Look at that beauty. I love it so much. Coin Vigilante made a perfect Bitcoin watch. That's the perfect, subtle, elegant way to go out there and show that you are a Bitcoiner. And that watch brand is Bitcoin. Bitcoin only. Make sure to check out the link in the description for this amazing coin vigilante timepieces. Those watches are amazing. I love them so much. It was really hard for me to pick the one that I want to have because there are a lot of great options. I went with the new transparency edition. They are all limited. So grab yours. Those will not be available for a long time, but there will come new models and new amazing designs along the way. It, it's not controversial to me at all okay. um i even have on my channel people that say i have another coin that's like it's it, it's a little bit saying like oh yeah i'm like i'm cheating on my wife like it feels <laughs> like a <com> <laughs> <laughs> like when people say that like i'm a bitcoin maxi i only have bitcoin uh and i truly think that everything else will go to zero uh or to a value very close to zero uh because maybe it finds some small small niche group that finds value in it but most importantly um i'm curious and I want to talk to the people. I want to s find out why they think like that and how they think about it uh, and what they think about. And I'm a free, ma free market maximalist. That's what I always say. Like, I think 
uh, if you're a free market maximalist, first of all, I think you kind of tend to be a Bitcoin maximalist because Bitcoin enables a free market. Uh, but uh, it's like both kind of play into each other. But I think we should not stop talking to people uh, that have, like, it, it feels like, oh, he has been sinned. Like, we can never, like, like even if you are, like, religious, like, we should forgive people. Like, that, that that's, that's, that's okay to make mistakes. Michael Saylor uh, trashed on Bitcoin once. We forgo- forgave him. Let, let's forgive people. Let's let them make mistakes. I think that's really important. Uh, and so the, the question also to you, do you think we are not welcoming enough? I think, I think we are. I think the Bitcoin community is very welcoming. These people who are the toxic maxis, let's call them toxic max, even though I hate that word toxic, but uh, they are very few and far between overall, I think. So, but I I think in general, Bitcoiners are very welcoming for sure. I mean, it, it, it's Bitcoin is, you could call it the great uniter of people of religions, right? Because everybody can use Bitcoin. It's just like eating food or, you know, breathing air. Like do, do certain people need different air? No, we all breathe air, but we can all be different, but we can all breathe air and eat food. And so Bitcoin's the same thing. Bitcoin uh, is good for everybody. And there's the, and, and Bitcoin doesn't differentiate, right? Bitcoin doesn't say, oh, it's better for Americans, but it's not so good for Australians. No, it's good for everybody. Doesn't matter your culture, your language. Nothing matters. Bitcoin is 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 a uniter in that way. And so I think in general, the 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 Bitcoin uh community is very welcoming uh, and, and for different reasons, right? Some are, some are like me who want to separate money from state. Other people, and we know in the developing world, they, most people don't have bank accounts and they, it, to, to have an easy way to transfer value is, is amazing. That's a literally life-changing for them. So there's different reasons people like Bitcoin, but we're all on the same team with it. And I, I think it's really amazing, obviously. Yeah, uh, it's. Uh, I think. I think we should. Um, like, I think the the toxicity comes a little bit from all those block size wars and all those really hard knockers that have that Bitcoin had to go through. Uh, so I have a lot of empathy with with that, and I didn't live through that. Like, I didn't live through the block size wars, uh, and and I feel like there's a lot of. There's also a, a big difference between Twitter and real life. Uh, I noticed mm-hmm. like if, if someone is outraged on Twitter, this doesn't mean he's like uh, so toxic as he is on Twitter on in, in real life. There's like a really big difference there. Um, also like with, with, with Twitter and having them on a show and talking with, to them, that's also like I have seen a big difference there just because, yeah, and Twitter has, has this format of, tying one thing down in a very small format uh you have to be very precise and very um small you cannot go out and and talk long then i have a podcast where i talk half an hour one hour sometimes even two two hours um and then we kind of really go ahead and and make those conclusions long uh with a with a long haul so that i'm aware of uh Sometimes uh, when you get a comment on YouTube or a reply on Twitter or you get a nos for something, it, it can feel a lot more toxic than that person actually is. Um, just because also there's no emotions to that. Like it's just text. Uh, but in general, I think the Bitcoin community is the most helpful uh, and loving community at all. Like I had so many great guests on before I even had a real podcast, uh, like Jeff Booth came on my podcast when I had like 200 subscribers, like th- that, that, that speaks miles to, to him and the Bitcoin community. So I, I've, that, that's kind of my, my conclusion to do that. Uh, Bitcoiners are curious and they're really humble, uh, and they're really loving and caring. Uh, but yeah, there, there's definitely a group that is, that is, toxic i don't i also don't like that word uh yeah. but it mostly comes out on twitter and doesn't come out on conferences uh and, and stuff like that for sure yeah and one one thing i thought of when you were mentioning that 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 the people posting on twitter with text only short amount of text only 
is not adequate for communication. It reminds me of that old study where they said 55% of communication is visual, 38% is auditory, so voice, and only 7% is uh, basically text. You could think of it that way. So on Twitter, when people are posting, you're not getting the visual of them. You can't see them. And in and, and communication, there's so many visual cues that people give. And so in Twitter, you miss all the visual cues. So the 55% gone. And the auditory also, you know, you can tell more from a person's voice than you can imagine. I mean, if I was to speak monotone and I was on the show and I was talking about Bitcoin and everything was good and as a right, that's obviously that's a robot. But me, you can just by my the inflections of my voice, you can tell so much. That's 38%. So throw all that out the window and you're left with 7% on Twitter. And that's that's actually like the scientific reason why there's so much miscommunication and nonsense and just, yeah, miscommunication on platforms like Twitter. Uh, I, I like it a lot, uh, what you're saying, because it's very true. There's this really nice meme of, of two dogs that are standing and there's a fence in between of them and they're barking at each other and then the fence comes out and they, they, they're kind of like, oh, everything is fine. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's like uh, Twitter versus real life. It's, I, I, yeah. I love that meme a lot. I think I posted it at least like 10 times already <laughs> in, in my in my two years <laughs> on Twitter because it, nice. it shows the, the community so well. Really cool. Um, before uh, we come closer to the end, uh, one more question. What makes you so confident that we get to this Bitcoin world? Well, I don't really know. I don't, I mean, all I know is the... F all I know is what I see right now. And for right now, everything looks really good. Bitcoin looks unstoppable. Um, we don't know what's going to happen. I mean, especially, for instance, this year, 2024, today is September 3rd. There's an election in two months, supposedly. People are saying the election's not even going to happen. We got monkeypox rumors and, and FOMO, or not FOMO, but fear. <laughs> no one's no one's afraid of missing out on monkeypox just to be clear uh but yeah so but like there's anyway the world we know the world is crazy and the crazy absolute evil lizard people who are in charge they're gonna try everything in their power to stop bitcoin and stop freedom money and stop Noster and everything and we don't know the lengths they're gonna go to so i don't know i don't i don't know where it's going but uh I also think there's going to be more privacy tools built, maybe around Bitcoin, maybe around Noster. I mean, we already have amazing uh, communication tools like Simple X, which runs on relays. It's like a, you know, it's like WhatsApp or Signal. It's like one of those, but it's way more uh, private, and it's also unstoppable, like Noster and like Bitcoin. So I think there's going to be more of these things, and there, and so. There will, in my opinion, there will always be like an underground of people who can transact not only in Bitcoin, but also mess, you know, use messaging and share content um, sort of underground. That's definitely always going to be there. Now, how, how, what percentage of the world that is, I don't know. Um, but I just, I'm always consoled by the fact that, uh, of Bitcoin being unstoppable. You know, it's been, more than 15 years has never been hacked. It's never been taken over. And, you know, it, you know, people say, oh, well, the NSA created Bitcoin. Well, I don't know, maybe, but probably not. But it doesn't matter. That's the whole point. It doesn't matter. They can't take it over, can they? No. Even if Satoshi is the NSA and they have 1.1 million Bitcoin, what does that mean? Okay, it means I guess they could sell everything and... But what good does it do them? So it's, there's nothing. Uh, and again, maybe this is the hopium speaking, right? I just, I just smoked quite a bit of hopium before this interview. <laughs> uh, may, maybe it's hopium. I don't know, but I am a hopeful person. And like I said, there's, for me getting into Bitcoin, there was sort of a mystical experience. And, and I know Max Kaiser also says Bitcoin is God and all that. Like he says stuff like that. People think he's crazy. You got to think about what he's saying. He's saying it for a reason. Now, I don't think Bitcoin is God, and I don't think he thinks that either. 
But there's a huge transcendent element to Bitcoin. There really is. And if you think about it, you'll see it. So I don't know where the future is going, but I am uh, very hopeful and, and very confident that Bitcoin will be a big part of our future and, and really be there to help the people. What is Simple X? I never heard about that. I just googled it. It lo looks interesting. Uh, yeah, so Simple X, it's like a me almost like a messenger app, like a tech, like a like a like a WhatsApp or a Signal. It 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 you can have you can do uh, communications one to one, or you can do them. You can have a group group message. So it's just a messaging app. You can also make calls on it. You can call people. But the way Simple X works is very interesting. It's like Noster. It runs through relays. So. It's not centralized. It, there's no, I mean, there's a developer who developed the, the app. And then there's a bunch of relays of which I'm running one. And you, so, and also uh, with SimpleX, there's no, you don't have to put in a phone number or email or anything, like literally nothing. And it just works. And so then that's it. Now people can message and uh, that's it. There's no, it's, it's complete privacy. There's no, There's no way anyone can get in to see what you're doing, right? And there's no way people can stop it either. Like, how can you stop that? It's like Noster and it's like Bitcoin. You can't stop it. Interesting. I love it. Yeah. Is it, um, but, but are you connected to, uh, like, if, if I'm already on there uh, and you are joining, do you see me or can you see, uh, or join me or do we have to say? be on the same relay or how does this work? Um, no, I think we would have to share, one of us would have to share our, uh, I forget what it's called. It's like the, it's like an end pub. It's like your, your identifier. What is it called? Let me, I have it right here. I might as well open it up and see that in Simple X, it's called your Simple X address. And it's just, you know, a QR code and then a, you can copy the address. So I would copy my address and send it to you either, you know, however I send it to you, email or whatever. And then you would just click it and then we connect on SimpleX. Ah, interesting. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, that's, uh, that looks interesting. The, the only, the only problem always is with uh, the messaging app. Um, like I already have, let's say free may, three main messaging apps on my phone with WhatsApp, Telegram, and Signal. Uh, and then uh, most of my Bitcoin community uh, messaging I do on Twitter. Uh, then people start texting me also on Nostra and also on Instagram and YouTube. I don't get messages because they turn actually this down. I, I think that's really good that they turn <laughs> that down. Otherwise, there would be another inbox. Uh, yeah, and there are all the other uh, messaging uh, apps that, that are there. So, like, it, it, it's a, it's already a, a lot. Yeah. And, and I think the the network effect of those is interesting uh, because even even Telegram, like WhatsApp, has such an massive network effect like i cannot get away from it because there are just people on there that will not switch like my grandma like my mom my, my dad like and it will be very hard to like say to them hey please don't not that uh and i don't want to be that pain in the ass for 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 them but that's the only thing that i'm like ah I love the idea of like decentralizing and, and really having extremely secure messaging. Uh, and if for two parties that if, if those are really important, uh, for, for both of them, then it makes totally sense. But completely switching away from them, it's just, just so hard. I know a friend of mine, he, he tries it since like five years, uh, to get away from WhatsApp and he wants to do it with Signal. Uh, and he still didn't exceed because he's like, there are people in my life that are important to me that don't switch from WhatsApp. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know if the Americans can also uh, ha have to, because I think in, in America, WhatsApp is not as common. Uh, but in, in Europe, WhatsApp, like, everyone is in WhatsApp. Like, that, that's the app where everyone communicates with. So I don't know. You, you're in America, right? Yep. I'm in America. Yeah. How, how do you communicate? Is it uh, also WhatsApp or like do you have other apps also? Yeah, I think a lot of people use WhatsApp. Uh, I think just regular text messaging. Honestly, most most Americans just use regular text messaging. What? Um, 
Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. People just, like with family and stuff, it's just texting. Most of my family is just texting. They're not even on an app. Yeah, and yeah. and I will I will underscore your point about SimpleX because I found out about it and I'm like, oh, this is the greatest messenger and I got it and I there was no one to like connect to. And so far after like a year, it's only... It's only like two people that I message on there. So the network effect, that, that is very true what you're saying. And, uh, and look, hopefully in the long run, we don't need things like SimpleX, right? It would be nice if these centralized platforms could just let people speak freely. But, and maybe they kind of are right now. Maybe now it's okay. But again, we don't know where it's going. So we'll see how it plays out. Uh, it's, it's interesting. But... How how can you still uh, use normal text? That, that's that's fascinating for me because like I think the la the only text messages I receive is for two factor authentication, <laughs> uh, and if I get a scam, like uh, scams are still on on text for for some reason because like if if I get a scam if I get a text I know uh, probably it's it's a scam, uh, so that like I only use like WhatsApp and and all those things, which is cool because i'm thinking of like okay i could get rid of my phone number honestly i i i i, I don't need it really uh, i phone with most of the people even on whatsapp i don't even use the normal phone thing like most of the time i phone with, with whatsapp um which is probably not good but i think it's better actually than than using the normal because phones like sms for example is not encrypted at all uh, and and WhatsApp at least is encrypted, but yeah, Facebook will still <laughs> still, yeah. still re read it. Uh, so that's that's interesting. But yeah, um, I have one more thing that I teased before. Um, uh, I, I, I thought I, I could bring it up today. I I, I tried because I was also like you. I was like, I know Bitcoin will far exceed my expectations and far exceed most of the expectations so i was like but i want to get to a point where i know where bitcoin goes because that's always the question i get from beginners i don't know if you also have that experience but when i talk with people they're always like yeah uh, where's bitcoin going and i'm like yeah up and then they're like yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. And, and i always wanted to have a good answer to that uh, and i always wanted to have a, a, at least a solid argument a logical argument that i can follow that i can um subscribe to myself do like okay i i have the current situation i make some assumptions to the future and if those assumptions are true then we go there like it's always like if 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 and then <laughs> we, we come there you have to make a lot of assumptions so maybe you can follow my logic um jesse myers the guy that makes that like 900 trillion um uh picture that also sailor uses a lot uh he says like there is 900 trillion global wealth out there for 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 humanity uh and if you divide that just normally by 21 million bit ptc that would be too easy like that that would be like oh like okay yeah then then we come to like 42 million uh us dollar per bitcoin but there's this caveat where first of all not all um, uh, Bitcoin are available. There are a lot of Bitcoin lost. And then they have the second caveat, Bitcoin will not vanish all value. Like there will still be value in real estate. There will still be their private companies and equities. Uh, there, there will be a lot of other things like uh, watches uh, will still have value. Uh, gold will still have value. Other metals will still have value. Then it's like, how much of the total thing can Bitcoin caption? That's the that's the thing that I'm wrestling around, and that's why I'm asking all my guests nowadays because that's like a, like I don't know, I have no clue. Um, and the most bullish scenario that I could think of, like that's the bull 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 case uh, for me, is eighty to ninety percent. Like if Bitcoin is actually like an, an amazing store of value, uh, and it's that money, like everyone says like we are saving our money in bitcoin 80 to 90 percent would be my guess because then um everyone would just dump everything they they don't have utility value uh, so even gold would fall to bitcoin a lot because people would only use it for the utility value for maybe jewelry phones like it's in the phones and, and other materials and electronics and stuff like that so 
when that happens, uh, and we assume that there are around 15 million uh, Bitcoin, uh, then we are looking at like a, a 50 million uh, Bitcoin price target, which I'm like, what? <laughs> In today's taller terms, there's no inflation there, there's nothing like that there, uh, which also means um, two Satoshis would be one dollar, uh, an interesting, uh, interesting uh, thing. Th that's uh, my current bull, bull, bull case uh, to just to open people's minds to the possibilities what bitcoin can do for those people who ask me oh but is isn't it isn't it too late for 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 bitcoin then i'm like calculating that and then they're like oh yeah like it's a huge possibility but there are a lot of ifs uh, along the way and i'm not saying bitcoin will definitely hit like 50 million dollar mark uh eventually probably it will because fiat will i think will die off so for so a few questions I have for you now. You have heard that for the first time here, I, I guess. Uh, what's your thoughts? And also, do you think Fiat will die? Because I just brought that up and I think uh, some Bitcoiners actually don't think that Fiat will die. Um, what are your thoughts? Uh, again, as a non-economist, I, I don't think Fiat will die. I think Fiat will just continually get more and more destroyed. And I think we're all going to hold our Bitcoin and we're going to borrow against it. And that's how we're going to do things in the real world. Um, that's one of the main ways that I feel we'll do things in the main, in the real world. Um, yeah, as far as the number and the future, uh, again, I don't know. I, I Your uh, bull, bull, bull case sounds good to me. I think as Michael Saylor said to Laura Shin, it's going up forever, Laura. Like and, and and by the way, I, by that time I had left as her producer, so I, I, I there was a chance in the world that I could have been on that session when he said that, uh, but I wasn't. Anyway, uh, <laughs> what would, would have been my new, next question? <laughs> yeah, but uh, so but but I really do think it's it's going to go up forever, uh, because just because of supply and demand. That's all, you know. I I think for, for just normal people to understand the long-term price action of Bitcoin supply and demand is all you have to understand. Like there's no, it's, it, it, it is that simple in my opinion. Uh, yeah. And the other thing is, especially during our lifetimes, cause look, even if you're born today, you're probably going to die around 2100. Let's say you'd, you'd be 80 or something. And Bitcoin's going to continue to be mined until around 2140. So I think, especially in our lifetimes, it's, it is just going to keep going up and it's going to be that store of value that Michael Saylor talks about. It, it is. Everything else is going to bleed and just melt. And Bitcoin's the only thing, not only is it going to hold its value, but it's going to go way up in value. So, and so for me, that's enough. I, you know, I don't need... I don't need numbers. I don't need $50 million per Bitcoin. Of course, I talk about numbers all the time, especially on my, you know, I put out a video every day and I meant, we meant, we talk about numbers because what else are you going to talk about every day? I mean, you got to talk about something. Um, we talk about a lot of news too, but um, my point is that overall, I think we're just going to keep going up. And, and as far as talking to new people who ask about numbers, like, oh, what is it going to go up to? I think at that point, it's really important to have this kind of conversation with them. The fact that number one, we don't know. Number two, uh, it's all, it's just all about supply and demand. Number three, Bitcoin is just going to keep going up because that's how Bitcoin works. Number four, it's the, it's the greatest store of value ever. If everything keeps working out the way it's working out. So those are the, those are the, like the fundamental important things to me. And so the number I mean, I'm ha like I said, I'm happy to talk about numbers and throw out big numbers because I hope they happen, uh, you know, because I want I want a huge retreat center somewhere on a lot of land and I want to have meditation retreats and I want to have a bunch of, you know, cabins throughout the, the th throughout the forest where people can come and spend two weeks on a meditation retreat and really just unplug from the world, maybe read some classic texts spiritual texts like the Bhagavad Gita and the Tao Te Ching and everything. And so uh, that's what I'm hoping for. And I hope, I hope my Bitcoin stack will, will uh, 
is big enough that I can borrow against it to to buy that uh, land and build a retreat center. But um, we'll see. But I'm hopeful. Uh, I, I, lo I love your um, I love your take on it. Like uh, your approach to, to to that conversation, really cool. Um, as you do a lot of news, what, what's the Uh, what what do you see currently interesting in in the news? Like when you see all the news, you kind of get a uh, a feeling on what's currently in the news bit in the Bitcoin news cycle. Uh, what 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 do you see there? Well, actually, I've been on vacation for about a week and a half, and today is like my first day back. So a after we talk, I'm I'm gonna actually make my first video after vacation after a week and a half. So I haven't been paying close attention to the news, but from what uh, well, first of all, in terms of the Bitcoin cycle, pretty much. Within a month, like October, November, we should start go going up for real. At some point, we'll start going up. We'll pass our all-time high, start going to 100K area and whatever. Um, next year is obviously the big year, the big peak year. So that's that. Uh, but also, apparently, the Fed in the U.S. is about to cut rates. And so that might start this, this chain reaction of uh of cutting rates and then more US dollars entering the system and and uh, again I'm not the technical guy but apparently was it for well during covid right didn't isn't covid when they just they basically put all the rates down to zero or something uh and so then you know all the economies could flourish so apparently that's what that means when they drop rates the economy is going to be able to flourish more and then those are the times when bitcoin also flourishes a lot so Uh, I think that's a that's a macro thing that's I, I think is going to be impactful, um, and and yeah, that besides that, I haven't followed any smaller news. I mean, for me, every day it's just it's always about adoption and building. It's 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 there's a new bank that is starting to offer Bitcoin to their to their customers. There's a new uh, investment firm that is now offering the, the Bitcoin as a spot ETF. There's a country that is allowing Bitcoin mining. Like there's just every day it's adoption, adoption, adoption. It's wonderful to see. So uh, let's go. I'm ready for this bull run. Uh, it's been a long, boring summer for my channel. It's hard to get on there every day and talk about nothing happening in terms of price. I mean, we need a little movement. We need a little, just get to a new all-time high. Even if you come back down, God, we all need just a little energy from the price. But anyway... <laughs> A li little more hopium we need. I love it a lot. Um, let's come to the end of, of the podcast. Um, one question to ask all my guests, what can we learn from you besides all the things that we already talked about? Well, I just want to say that I have, and I'll, sp I'll speak to you, the viewer directly. I have faith in you. I know you can, what, whatever is happening here in your life right now, if it's some bad things you want to get away from, I have faith that you can, transcend that and move move away and you have goals and aspirations i have faith that you can move toward those goals and achieve your goals i really do this is the human condition and it it, it comes down to you and so i just want to say that i have faith in you to move forward and move up and really thrust your life into into a place where you didn't you didn't even know it could be And part of that is dropping all your baggage. Just drop all your baggage, all your emotional baggage, everything. And it's astounding what we as humans can achieve. And, uh, and so I have faith in you. That's, that's, I don't know if that's something you can learn from me, but that's something I just wanted to say. That's beautiful. I love that a lot. Uh, now we, we talked about faith in something. Uh, now the end routine is where we have... Uh, the previous guest asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest is. Uh, and the, the question is, what can cause Bitcoin to fail? Wow, there's there's probably a million things. Uh, I would assume there's a million things. Um, maybe not a million, but many things. I don't know. I mean, well, people talk about a meteor hitting the earth or something, all the electricity going away. That would that would at least kill Bitcoin in the in the short term. Um, also if, uh, if there's a government or a global entity that becomes so authoritarian that they literally just start taking over the world and, and they say that Bitcoin's illegal and no one can use it and they start 
confiscating it. That's for sure. That's a possibility. Um, and especially that starting in Europe, because y- you guys in Europe have no guns. Like, like at least in the U S th- the U S can't do that. Literally the U S can't say you can't do this. You, 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 Bitcoin's illegal. You can't do it. They can't say that because if they try to come door to door, there's not enough of them to come door to door. They're all going to get shot. So that's that. But in Europe, you guys are anyway, it's po- more possible in Europe. Um, what else? Maybe Satoshi comes back and starts leveraging his 1.1 million Bitcoin in a bad way. I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe someone does find out how to hack Bitcoin. Maybe that's another one. Uh, maybe someone actually hacks it and destroys it or just takes it all. Right. And I don't know. Um, yeah, those are, those are a few things off the top of my head. Really cool. Uh, I think, I think we should focus more on, not focus more, but we should be more aware of what can, can happen to Bitcoin. Because if we know that better, we also know Bitcoin better and our faith in Bitcoin will also be then better. So I think that there's a lot of, um, it's a funny story, um, how I got into Bitcoin. I was 100% of the opinion that Bitcoin is a scam for three years straight. And a friend challenged me and asked questions about that. He was not even a Bitcoiner. He was not a Bitcoiner. He was just asking me questions about it. And I was discovering that I don't have enough arguments. So I really wanted to have the pursuit of why Bitcoin is a scam and wanted to make that argument. And in pursuit of that argument making, I discovered Bitcoin because I was open to the idea of Bitcoin. I really discovered it. So I think even as a Bitcoiner in that Bitcoin bubble, we have to always, always keep learning about the negative things about Bitcoin, about other things than Bitcoin and have those conversations. Uh, Otherwise, we will be in an echo chamber. And the bad thing about an echo chamber is you get blind spots. Uh, And that's what uh, I think is the real um, danger to Bitcoin, that Bitcoin and the Bitcoin community is growing a blind spot uh, where there are it, it might not need to be a blind spot. So I think that's 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 one thing that I try to, to bring up in those conversations. But yeah, it has been a pleasure uh, talking uh, with, with you, Chris. It was really, really cool. Uh, thank you so much for being on. Before I let you go, where can people find you? Where can people read uh, and watch your stuff? Yeah, fractalbitcoin.com. That's the website. That's the show on YouTube. It's It's catching on most on YouTube, but I do put it on Rumble. And I was putting it on Flare, on which is on Noster. It's a Noster app, uh, but anyway, I, that's there's an issue with that. The developers working on so, yeah, fractalbitcoin.com. My my, every time you start a video on YouTube, I say, oh yeah, fractal Bitcoin. That's my little opening tag. So it's it's kind of fun, and I play a sound clip too of this this guy. It's a sound clip of this guy Barry, who's my producer. Uh, he's got a really deep voice. It's really fun. So fractalbitcoin.com. Hey, I, I love it. Uh, the, the, the end of scene, uh, I watched it today before the podcast and I was like, oh, nice. And I was not even, I, I thought that probably it's some uh, um, famous meme or something that you that you play, but it's your producer. And he has a really nice voice. Yeah, but he's really not my producer. He's actually, I, I, quick story. I had a podcast studio in New Jersey from 2012 to 2015, a physical podcast studio. This is before people, this is early days podcasting so or medium days podcasting. And anyway, the maintenance guy in the building was this guy, Barry, this, this big black guy. He was a, he was in the Navy. He was a seaman and he had this voice and he would come in. He was an older gentleman and he would come in and he would sort of sit in my studio just sort of to take a break. He would sit so no one could see him and he would just start talking. And I slowly, his voice was so amazing. I'm like, Barry, so I just put up a mic in front of him and I would just move it a little closer. A few minutes later, move it closer. And I, him and I just talked and I let him talk. And all the, all the quotes I play on my show are clips from the audio of him just hanging out talking in my studio. So anyway, now I have those clips, which are amazing. And I, I pretend on my show that he's my producer and I ask him questions and it's, it's fun. It's a fun little thing. And, and uh, yeah. 
Uh, I, I love that. Uh, really cool. Thank you for sharing the, the story with us. I uh, also thank you so much for taking the time. Also, thank you so much for everyone that is watching and listening for being on the show today. As always, I'll be back tomorrow with another guest. Bye bye. <laughs>